Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we're gonna learn about Ajax. So, let's get this started. So, what is Ajax? Ajax is neither a framework nor a programming language. It's just a set of techniques that we use to send and receive data between the client and the server asynchronously. So, what it essentially means is that let's say you have a component on your web page which needs data to use to populate it. But that data is present inside the server and you want to get that data from the server but in the meantime you don't want to actually refresh the page to send that request. So for that purpose we use Ajax and Ajax is an abbreviation for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And in this case XML is loosely bound and that is because JSON has mostly replaced XML so we don't use XML anymore we mostly use JSON. So for this video we're going to see three ways of actually accessing the data through Ajax. The first way is where we can access data from a text file and the second way we are going to see how we can access data from a JSON file whether it might be a local file or an online API. And in the third way we can see how we can actually send the data to a backend PHP file from the front end form. So with that out of the way let's get this started. So this is my project structure and in here I have a file called as index.html and in that I have the basic boiler template so this is that. So before going further let's first create a dummy text file that we can use to access the data. Okay, so let's close that off. Now, to actually send the request, we need to actually click a button, right? So let's first create a simple button. Now, what we want to actually happen is that whenever this button is clicked, a particular function inside JavaScript has to be executed. So in order to make that happen, we can use the onClick event that's going to actually initialize an event whenever this particular button is clicked. So now let's actually initialize a script so that we can actually write the function that we want to use. So the function that we defined before was show text. So let's type that out. So the main thing that you have to remember is that inside Ajax, everything is handled by an object and that object is the XML HTTP request object. So let's create that object. So I'm going to initialize it. I'm going to give it as XHR new XML HTTP request. So that's the function that we're going to use. So XHR here is the object that we're going to use. So inside XHR, we have multiple methods that we can use. And the main method that we're going to use is a method called as open. And that open method is what we're going to use to actually initialize the request. So this open method actually requires three parameters. The first one is going to be the method. That is whether it's going to be a get method or a post method. The second one is going to be the file itself. That is the text file that we're going to use that is the dummy.txt. The third one is whether the request has to be asynchronous or synchronous. So it's a true or false. So let's type that out. So here for the file itself, if this file is present inside a subdirectory, then you have to give the location of that subdirectory as well. But since we had that in the root directory, I've directly given the dummy.txt file name. And after you have initialized the request, the next thing is that you have to send that request. So we have another method for that called as send. So you can use that to send the request. But the main thing is that before actually sending the request, you have to actually handle the response. So whenever you send a request, the server is going to give you a response, right? With the data that you're going to use. So you have to handle that response. So we have a method for that called as onload. And we're going to equate it to a callback function. In here, we're going to write the code to actually handle the response. So the first thing that you have to do is that we have to actually check whether the status is OK or not. So these are the status codes. And in here, as you can see, 200 represents that it was an OK. So if you receive that 200 status code, only then you have to perform the following functions or the following executions. So I'm going to write an if condition for that. And for that, I'm going to pass in the XHR dot status is equal to 200. So if the status is equivalent to 200, only then you have to execute the following lines. So what we're actually going to do is that we're going to actually take the response and display it onto the screen. So for that, let's create a paragraph inside our HTML tag and let's assign an ID to it. So I'm going to give it as text. And in here, let's use the document object model to access that ID. So I'm going to write document, get element by ID. And for that, I'm going to pass in the ID of text and then for that particular ID, I'm going to use the inner HTML. So I'm going to change that inner HTML. And for that, I'm going to pass in the response itself. So I'm going to use the XHR object. And for that, I'm going to type the response text. So what this is going to do is that it's going to take the response and add that to the HTML of this particular ID, that is to the paragraph itself. 
and after it has been done then it's going to send that request so whenever you receive a response this word is going to be executed to handle that request so let's save this and go to the browser and see how this is going to work so let's refresh the page so you have a button here i'm going to click on that and whenever you click on that it's going to show this this is just some dummy text so that's the text that we had seen in the dummy.txt file so as you can see here whenever you click on this button the page is not refreshing but the data is being displayed so the data is being sent asynchronously between the server and the client so that's how you access data from a text file so now let's see how we can access data from a json file which is present online that is through a third party api and for this we're going to use the github api so let me open my browser and let's go to github so this is the rest api provided by github so you can use this to actually access the data present inside github so this is the url so let me copy this and open it on a new tab so whenever you use this url it's going to give you access to the first 30 users inside github so as you can see these are the first 30 users and they are numbered according to their ids so now if you want you can go to a particular person as well so if you want you can go to packet code you just have to give slash and after that you have to give the name of the particular account and that's going to show the details of that particular account packet code so for this video we're going to use this api to get the information so let me copy that so the process for that is pretty much similar so let me duplicate this button and instead of show text i'm going to type it as show content and also change this from show text to show api text or show api content whatever you want it to be and in here after the paragraph let's create a div to actually display the data that you're going to get from the api so for that i'm going to give an id and i'm going to name it as content and let's save that so the function is going to be pretty much similar so let's copy this as well and let's paste it below so now let's change it to api text so that's what we had given here so in here you have to first initialize the object itself and as for the open method instead of actually giving this file you're going to remove that and type in the url for that particular api and the send request is going to remain same the only thing that's going to change is the onload method so for this first you're going to check whether the status is 200 or not and after that before actually sending the response what we want to do is that get that response of that 30 users and since we're getting data for 30 users it's going to be an object so we're going to loop through that and get data for each and every person and append that to a particular variable so that we get the whole data inside a single variable so let me show that to you so first we're going to create a variable called as content and that's going to be equated to nothing but empty then later let's create another variable and this time let's equate this to the xhr dot response text and the thing is that since we're actually getting the data in the format of json we have to parse this so for that we're going to use the json dot parse method to parse that data and we're going to get the object then we're going to loop through that data that is the json object and we're going to get the data for each and every individual user so the logic for that is something like this So what I'm doing here essentially is that I'm going to take that ID for each and every person inside the data object and use that ID to access individual components of that particular user. So this avatar underscore URL is going to give me the profile photo of that particular person and this login is going to give me the name of that particular person. So if you go to the API once again, as you can see here, login is going to give me the username and avatar underscore URL is going to give me the URL of that particular person's profile picture. So I'm going to give that URL to the SRC of the image tag and I'm going to type in the name of that particular person inside a H5 tag. So I'm using the ES6 notation for this so that it's easy for me to actually write variables inside of a particular string. And I'm actually doing that and appending that to the content. So this content right now contains the division for each and every particular user. So now instead of actually passing the response text, let's pass in the content itself. Let's save that. Go to the browser, refresh the page. We have two buttons. Let me zoom out a bit. Let's click on the show content. And that's going to give me the profile picture and the name of all the 30 users 
from the GitHub API. So now if you click on show text, that's going to give me, this is just some dummy text. So that's how you actually access data from a third party API in the format of a JSON file. So the last way is to actually send the data to a backend PHP file. So for that, let's first create another file and I'm going to name this file as form.php and in here, let's copy this from the index file. Let's paste it here and let's remove whatever is there inside the body. And also as for the script, let's remove this. We don't need this anymore. Let's remove the second one. So let's first actually see how a normal form works. So we have an action, right? So for that action, we need to actually send that data to a file. So let's create a file here and I'm going to name it as submit.php. And whenever something is submitted to this file, it has to output that. So what we're trying to do here is that whenever a request is sent with the value of username, you have to take that username and echo out hi comma that particular value. Okay. So whenever you send the data from here, you have to send it to submit.php. So the action is going to be submit.php as you're going to submit the data to this particular file. Then you're going to give the method, but that's going to be a post method or a get method. For now, let's say it's a get method. So in here, let's have an input tag and it's going to accept the username. So the name is going to be username and there's going to be a button. So let's save that and let's go to the browser and go to that particular file. So in here, let's type in something, click on submit and that's going to output hi comma Kamal. So that's what I had typed here. So what's actually happening here is that whenever you click on submit, that data is being sent through the URL in the form of query parameters. Here username is equal to Teja. So now to, in order to replicate that, let's first duplicate this and comment this out. Now, since we're actually using Ajax to send the data, we don't need this here. So let's remove this. We're going to use that through the Ajax itself and we need to give it as submit. And we don't need the name as well. Instead, we need an ID. Let's say it's just name. Okay. And also we want to actually have an on click event. So let's type that. So whenever this button is clicked, you want to actually use this method. And let's rename this to get so that we can differentiate the get and the post. So it's going to be show text get. So the function is going to be pretty much same. So first we're going to create the object itself. So we're going to initialize it. Then later we're going to write the request. And here, instead of actually giving the dummy.txt, let's give the submit.php. And also you have to actually manually type the query parameters. So it's going to be username is equal to name. So here this name is a variable that we haven't defined yet. Let me convert this to ES6. Yeah. So let's create that variable. So we're actually trying to get the value of this particular ID, that is the input tag. So we're going to get that value, assign it to a variable called as name, and we're going to pass that variable through the query parameters to submit.php. Then we're going to use the onload function to handle the response. And instead of actually displaying the data on the screen, let's console log that data. Let's save that, go to the browser, refresh the page. Let's remove this, refresh the page. Let's open the tools and here let's type in some name. Click on submit. And as you can see, nothing's happening. And that is because even after doing all of this, the form is getting submitted by the default way. So in order to make this work, we have to make sure we can prevent the default form submission. So for that, we're going to use an event variable here. So we're going to pass in the event variable here and we're going to access it here. So whenever an event is generated, that is whenever the button is clicked, what we want to do is that we're going to use that event variable to prevent the default submission. So now if you save that, go to the browser once again, refresh it. And this time let's type it once again, click on submit. And as you can see here, it is showing me that text. So let me zoom in. I don't think you can see it. Yeah. So you can see that response.
So we have to actually prevent the default mechanism before actually using the Ajax inside a post or get request. So now let's see how we can do it through the post method as well. The post is a bit different compared to the get request. So let's copy this. And since we actually send the data to the post request, we can't actually send the data to the parameters. That is the URL query parameters. That is, we can't use this method. So for that, what we're going to do is that below this name that we had actually got by using the document get element by ID, we're going to create another variable. And we're going to equate that to the query parameters that we had created. Now let's remove that from here. We don't need that here anymore. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to pass these parameters directly in the send method. And also we have to set the header content type as well. So before the onload, let's use the XHR, set the request header. So the content type is going to be application slash X hyphen WWW hyphen form hyphen URL encoded. So you don't actually need to remember this. This is going to remain same when you send the data. So you can just copy those and paste it wherever you want. So you have to set that header to actually send the data to the form. Okay. So now let's save that. Go to the browser once again. Oh, and before that, let's rename this to post. And also let's remove it from here as well. And let's remove it from here as well. Let's save that. Go to the browser, refresh once again, type in the name, submit. And as you can see here, the data is being outputted. That means the post request was also successful. So in this way, you can actually send get or post request to the backend PHP file. From the PHP file, what you can do is that if you want to send this request to the database, what you can do is that you can initialize the database from here and use the data parameters from the request query and take that parameters and use that parameters to execute a particular query. And one more tip for you guys is that let's say you don't want to actually send the data to an external file like submit.php and you want to handle that request in this file itself. So in order to make that happen, you can use functions. So what you want to do is that essentially you want to call a particular function whenever this is executed. So what you're going to do is that you're going to replace this with this particular file name that is form.php. And in here, what you're going to do is that along with this username is equal to name, what you're going to do is that you're going to pass in the function name as well. So it's going to be something like and function is equal to function underscore one. So if this function is equivalent to function underscore one, then you have to execute a function underscore one, which is defined above the HTML. Okay. So in that way, you can execute a particular function present inside this file itself without actually sending the data to an external file. So that's how you actually send and receive data through Ajax. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.